Hey, it's me again. Uh, so, I'm just going to get right to it. I got a new guitar. A uh, Hard Luck Kings Bombshell uh, Edition guitar. And, uh, you know, most of us have seen the uh, ads on Facebook. And they probably got ads elsewhere. Uh, advertising really cheap guitars. Um price wise and I normally don't get into prices that much but uh, I picked this particular guitar up for a hundred dollars it was a clearance guitar now from past experience when you buy a hundred dollar guitar you expect to see crap it's also known as a POS a piece of shit um, I had seen some reviews online uh, via YouTube and really wanted to check it out for myself. So I took a chance. I ordered one of their clearance guitars. And, uh, you know, on their website, they advertise that uh, they do pro setups and this, that, and the other. Well, I didn't get my hopes up because, quite honestly, you get what you pay for when it comes to guitars. And I figure $100 is going to need some work. And I was right. Uh, so, right out of the box, this guitar was not playable at all. Uh, the low E string, or the first string, was uh, fretting out so bad you couldn't get a note, a clear note, out of any of the frets. Um, which I've got some uh, pictures I'll pop up to uh, kind of go through that. But, uh, you know, as far as the guitar itself goes, on the website, they don't advertise where the guitars are actually made. Uh, on the guitar itself, which I've got some pictures I'll put up, they don't uh, say where the guitar is made. So you're kind of scratching your head just going, well, who knows? Could have been made in somebody's garage for all I know. But uh, the paint job on it, I like it quite a bit. It's what I consider a B-stock guitar in a playable condition uh, as far as the finish goes. Uh, it does have some flaws in it, but for the most part, it looks really good. Um, now, one thing with the uh, finish, if it wasn't for this particular finish, I would not have gotten a guitar at all. Uh, the color just really intrigued me quite a bit. Uh, so let's go into some of the stuff that I found uh, right out of the box. I'll pop uh, some pictures up so you can see what I'm talking about here. Okay, I'll get this one up here. Now one thing I did find besides after tuning it, find the... Uh, the strings were uh, fretting out bad, and part of the reason for that was this. The uh, neck pocket on the guitar that the neck slides into and then uh, gets bolted in via the uh, screws on the back of the guitar. There was a good-sized gap in there, and it's big enough I could stick my pick into it. So here's one picture of that. And I'll pull up the other one here. Okay. All right, here's the other one. A little better picture. You can see the gap in there. Uh, my pick is sticking in there. That's a, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember. I think it's like a 72 millimeter or something like that. But the uh, the neck itself, when I held the guitar... And went like this, I can feel the movement in the neck. Um, so it definitely was not uh, secured down real good. Now I ran into that problem before on uh, another guitar a few years back. I ended up taking the uh, neck off and of this guitar to see if it was the same issue, and it was. So this next picture is what I found in the uh, pocket joint 
Now, I, I didn't find the quarter in there. I just put that there for scale just to show you what uh, I pulled out of that pocket joint. Um, all these little uh, strands of wood that were just loose in there. Uh, they shouldn't have been, but, you know, it was definitely loose. So that wasn't good. So after I got that taken out of the guitar, then I uh, put the neck back on. And get a picture of that one. Uh, subsequently, it, it fit together a whole lot better. And you'll notice that there's not as much of a gap in there now. Um, it definitely took care of some of the fret, bi fret, buzz, uh, fret buzz that uh, I had on the guitar. And there was still some more adjustments I had to make. At, at this point, the guitar was still in a non-playable condition because of the uh, low E string, or the first string, right here. Uh, it was fretting out so bad that you couldn't play it at all. All right, let's get to the next one. All right, the next one, part of the reason why I was uh, fretting out real bad was uh, the saddles. The saddle here, which is in the picture, uh, was so low for this string that you couldn't get clearance on it. So you'll say part of the setup, and that's something you should expect on any guitar you get through the mail, is going to need to be set up. Um, I know what uh, Hard Luck Kings advertises, that their guitars are pro set up, uh, but this one definitely wasn't for some reason. So, uh, get the next picture up, but you can see where the saddles were, and I had a bunch of fret buzz going on. And get this next one up here. You can see what was happening there. So here's the difference. Uh, once I got it into a playable condition, uh, the uh, saddles, obviously, you see how high they are. I definitely had to raise them up. And then, obviously, once I got the uh, fret problem cleared up, then I had to set the intonation. Uh, the intonation on the first five strings, no problem. I got to the sixth string. I could get it close, but it's not dead on. And I tried back, going backwards, going forwards. You know, I, I used my digital tuner. And just that particular uh, string, for whatever reason, uh, I can get close on the intonation, but it's not dead on. So uh, that brings me to my next, uh, well, actually, I'm jumping ahead here. Uh, shortly after I got the, uh, the saddles adjusted and the intonation set, uh, I noticed the uh, plastic film was still on the uh, guitar over the uh, pickguard. Uh, so I took that off, and in doing so, I pulled off the uh, knobs so I can get the plastic off around them and lo and behold look what I found. Uh, this particular pick guard the original holes that were here were not used. Uh, so when this board was built they put in holes in a different location in order to accommodate this setup. Which when the knobs are on you're really not going to notice, which obviously here's a guitar. Do you notice those extra holes? No, you don't. So that was uh, something else I found. Let's go to the next one here. On the back of the guitar, get this one up. Uh, now in this particular picture, let me see if I can get this guitar turned around so I can reference this. Okay, so there you go, about like that. So this particular picture was, uh, I took a picture of this top edge right here. Uh, this back plate, 
was sitting too far this way and you can actually see the edge of the uh, cavity underneath. So what I did is I pulled off this cover plate and I took a uh, Phillips head screwdriver, cleaned out the holes a little bit on both sides and then underneath uh, cleaned the holes out a little bit with the Phillips screwdriver just the, the tip of it, kind of round them out a little bit and then put it back on. It gave me just that little extra clearance to where I can push this plate up just a little bit so you didn't see the cavity. So that was that one. Uh, let's get to the next one. Oh yes, you're going to love this one. Now this next one is a picture of the nut. Now, let me get the guitar turned back around here. Uh, now, the nut on this guitar is actually pretty thin. I, I used to seeing the nuts thicker. And why this one's so thin, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, now, one thing, too, with that, let me pull up the, another set of picture here. Oh, there we go. Oh, gravy. Okay. Now, with this nut, it, it's thin, but at the same time, look how deep the uh, strings are cut into the uh, nut itself. I've never seen a guitar with a string set that far down into the nut. So as one upgrade I may be making later is uh, I'm probably going to replace the nut and put a graphite nut in instead and uh, raise those strings up just a bit. So that's uh, one thing you get to look forward to if you uh, get one of these guitars. Uh... Let me pull this one up and give you a better shot of that. Oh, crazy. Where are we? There we go. So you can see here's a dead on, you know, forward shot of it. You can see how deep the uh, strings are cut in. Which, you know, like I said, I, I've never seen a guitar with uh, strings that deep into the nut. Um, just didn't seem quite right to me. Alright, let's move on. Here's another one. Okay, another picture here. Uh, obviously, you know, for a hundred bucks, the quality of the guitar is not that great. It's, again, you get what you pay for when it comes to quality. Um, so... The nut doesn't seem like it's going to be that big of a deal to replace. Uh, probably is just probably glued in, and it doesn't look like they did a very good job of that. Whoever made the guitar, so uh, it probably a fairly simple just swapping them out. Um, you know, I'll get the graphite nut, put that in there, and take care of that issue. All right, let's go to this next picture. Here's a uh, picture of the back of the headstock. And this is the uh, the logo. So you can see what that looks like. Uh, and again, on the website, I did not see any pictures of the reverse side of the guitars, which is really odd. But for 100 bucks, I guess I don't want to. You know, take an extra picture. Who knows? Uh, here's another shot of the back of the headstock. And this is where you would expect to see uh, where the guitar is made. And obviously, you can see there's nothing there uh, saying where the guitar is made. It says, Design and Backed by Hard Luck Kings, SoCal, USA. Well, that's great, but where's it made? All right, moving on. Okay, so uh, this last picture really stumped me. But uh, 
I'll just get it up here and you can see what it is. <laughs> You're probably going to start laughing. Uh, they uh, sent the little accessory bag, which has got the uh, Allen key in there and you know so forth and so on. Well, according to this little piece of paper, uh, I have acoustic guitar strings on my electric guitar. At this point, I'm not going to change the strings because I already know that, you know, I'm going to have to pull strings off anyway when I replace the nut. So when I get to that point, uh, I'll replace the strings then. Until then, it's just going to have to have acoustic strings, and that's all there is to it. All right. Um, one more thing I want to point out with this guitar. After I did the initial tuning on it, um, and I found out that string was dead on the frets. I went to plug it in and found that it was going in, but not all the way into the jack here. And I couldn't figure out why. Um, so I ended up pulling the plate off, and I found that the wires that are attached, soldered onto here, that go into the electronics cavity, those wires are actually uh, about that long. And uh, needless to say, this little hole here for this unit is not very big. Uh, the wire was actually keeping uh, the actual jack from connecting. So what I had to do is reroute the wire inside carefully and then put this back on. So now when I plug this cable in, you know, it clicks in like it's supposed to. Uh, so that that's an easy fix. It's just kind of a pain in the ass. Um, all right, so I'm not going to do a sound sample yet. Uh, I have a Fender guitar sitting in the living room that I paid roughly about the same amount for. Uh, this one was a hundred bucks in clearance. The Fender I got uh, was about a hundred bucks also. So I think that'd be a good side by side comparison. Uh, between the two guitars. They're set up similarly. Um, I, I think it would be really fun. So I'll probably do a sound sample that way. And you can see the difference what 100 bucks will get you with, say, a Fender guitar versus 100 bucks with a uh, Hard Luck King's guitar. Uh, I think that would be a pretty good comparison. Uh, now, I, I do want to say, just to be fair, I've never tried Hard Luck King guitars before. And this could have just been a fluke. Uh, why the neck, you know, joint itself, the pocket had those chips of wood in there still. And the neck wasn't set right. Why it had fret buzz so bad. Me personally, I look at that as before it went out of the facility in Southern California, there pro tech should have caught that and corrected the issue before it went out the door so that way i wouldn't have had to do it now keep in mind honestly when i first seen this guitar online keeping it stock was never my intent so i had planned on upgrading it anyway uh so the the items that other people may have sent the guitar back for and, and demanded a refund is not that big of a deal to me because I plan on changing out uh, the pick guard and going instead of three singles, I'm going to go two humbuckers, one on the neck, one on the bridge. I'm also changing out this bridge unit and going to a Floyd Rose bridge. Uh, plus, obviously, the nut I was going to be changed out also. So I had planned on modding the guitar before I ever bought it anyway, but I figure if nothing else, for a hundred bucks, it's a good parts guitar, and it's a good starting point for building the guitar you want. Uh, so now the neck issue's straight, the body's good, you know, there's no major dings or scratches in it. Uh, it it's a good starting point for me. Uh, I, I can take it all apart. Now, I know that other people out there that you're looking for, say, a first guitar for your child, and they're going to be learning guitar and so forth. 
again, I can't emphasize enough, you get what you pay for. If you buy it online, expect it to need work when it gets to your front door. It's going to need to be set up. You're going to need to adjust, like in this case, adjust the saddles. You're going to need to set the intonation. Uh, there might even be more work involved than that. So it, it kind of is up to you at this point. Cheap and save money initially and then spend a little bit more money to get it set up professionally once it gets to your house. Or, you know, go to your local guitar store where you can pick the guitar up, uh, play it. If it needs work, make a deal where their techs have to fix it before it leaves with you. Uh, a lot of uh, retailers that sell guitars will make those deals with you, especially if it's like a mama pop place or, you know, even Guitar Center will uh, come along and say, okay, hey, you know, we'll change the strings. We're going to put brand new strings on it and we're going to set the intonation, tune it all up for you. Um, you know, they even throw some polish on sometimes and clean it all up real good. So, those are things to consider. Uh, now, again, first time hard luck King's guitar owner. Uh, for a hundred bucks, it's pretty much what I expected. Uh, nothing, you know, overly fancy so far, and uh, it's just one of those things. You know, I wanted to check it out for myself only because there's a lot of hype online about them and I thought it would be really interesting just to get one and check it out for myself. Now I'm not saying all their guitars are going to have the issues that this one did but as far as my first Hard Luck Kings guitar goes so far I'm not really that impressed. Um, but for a hundred bucks what the hell. Anyway um, hope this information is helpful here probably in the next week I'm going to have another video up uh, with sound samples of uh, this guitar and the Fender and this guitar is going to be done before I switch out the uh, pick guard and the pickups and so forth. So you're going to get a stock comparison of this guitar versus the stock Fender guitar. And who knows it could be fun. But anyway uh, I kept you busy long enough. I'm going to let you go for now. And until next time, peace, rock on, and later.